So there are a couple of different points that I think should, are worth keeping in mind, that people should keep in mind. One is that there's a lot of energy embedded in water, and the other is that there's a lot of water embedded in energy. Therefore, saving energy is a pretty effective way to save water, and saving water is an effective way to save energy. So that's the first point. And the second point is there's also an overlay of information, that if we have more information about how much energy and water we use, we can presumably make better decisions. So if we want to be resourceful, then we should be resourceful with energy and water, and that having more information helps us achieve those goals. There are a couple of different things city leaders can do to reduce the cross-sectoral vulnerabilities. They can look for energy lean water technologies and water lean energy technologies that helps make each sector less vulnerable to the other's constraints. They can also add in more information and details of metering about both of the resources along the way so they can keep better track of it. What you don't want is for a constraint in one to become a constraint in the other. That can cause rippling, cascading sort of problems in the infrastructure. So avoiding that with better metrics, better metrology, better information is a good idea. If we do a big build out of smart grid and smart water, the hope is our system will be more resilient, it will be more efficient, and will more easily achieve conservation goals, all while achieving the production we need or the supply of energy and water we need at a price that's affordable. When we do a big build out of distributed generation, one of the first things people think about is rooftop solar. And rooftop solar has many benefits. One of the challenges of rooftop solar is that it is intermittent. It comes and goes with the weather, and with the daytime versus nighttime. So that means we'll have to manage in the grid not only dynamic load from the users, but also dynamic supply from the power systems. Because that means you'll need a smarter grid to manage all that. At the same time, solar reduces our water need for power generation, which is good for the water system. And if we incorporate that with water harvesting, other distributed water systems will have intermittent supply of water as well. So a smarter system throughout helps us manage these new renewable resources, lets us save energy and water. That means we have to manage them a little more smarter. I think one of the ways to reach more people is to get the stakeholders involved in the different decisions. There's 315 million stakeholders in the United States, and that's each individual energy and water decision maker, whether they're making those decisions directly or indirectly. Getting people involved, getting them educated is part of it. Uh, creating public-private partnerships for the different levels of government so that the industry is working together with their local, state, and federal government is a better way to go as opposed to being at war with each other, keeping people out of the decision making. One of the things I like about the smarter grid and smart water systems is it provides more information to the decision makers directly. It sort of democratizes our energy and water resource decisions, and that gets them involved, and as a consequence, people probably get smarter.